Let's go out now to Toronto, Canada, and we'll talk with Maddie. Hi, Maddie. Andrew, how are you? Good. How are you doing? Well, I, I find that I'm being stung. Every time I listen to your show, uh, it's like you're the eternal gadfly. <laughs> I find I get more and more questions every time I listen to your show, and I love it. Oh, okay. Good. So, am I allowed to ask two questions? Well, why don't we work on one at a time here? What's your first Okay. One? Um, let's do this one first, then. In James, uh, James says that if somebody finds themselves, first of all, we both we believe that God took our sins and wiped them out and put them away from Him. Yeah. Okay. So there's an interesting question though um, that James talks about. Um, if somebody's sick, let him call the elders. They'll anoint him with oil to pray for him, and his any sins that he's committed will be forgiven. Yeah. You want to tackle that? Sure. Yeah, thanks, Maddie, for that question. It's coming out of James chapter 5. Is any among you in trouble? Let him pray. Is anyone happy? Let them sing songs of praise. Is any among you sick? Let them call the elders and the church to pray over them, anoint them with oil in the name of the Lord. The prayer offered in faith will make the sick person well. The Lord will raise them up. Here it comes. And if if they have sinned, they will be forgiven. So uh, what's the condition for being forgiven there? What's the if? Well, here's the answer to that question. Listen in. Listen close. Here's the condition for you being forgiven as a Christian. It says, if they have sinned, they will be forgiven. So what has to happen for you to be forgiven? You have to sin. In other words, the sin has to exist. In other words, that's the condition. If the sin exists, the sin is forgiven. So this is a time verse, and it's also a comfort verse. If I say to you, Maddie, uh, if you have sinned, they'll be forgiven. Well, what does that even mean? Well, that just means if the sin exists, don't worry. I want to comfort you and let you know that they'll be forgiven. So it says, confess your sins one to another and pray for each other so that you may be healed. Healed from what? Healed from your sins. So if these sins exist tomorrow or the next day or the next day or the next day, then they will be forgiven. Uh, what if they don't exist? Then they won't be forgiven. Why not? Because they don't even exist. You can't forgive an, a non-existent sin. <laughs> so, you know, uh, my point is, is that this is meant to comfort Christians, not scare them. So when we look at this passage, we have to recognize that's James's agenda here. His agenda is to let any Christian anywhere know, hey, uh, tell people about your struggles, have them pray for you so that you can be healed of your struggle. And then also, if you commit a sin tomorrow, next week, next month, it'll be forgiven. So this is a comfort passage, not a scary passage. The only condition given is that the sin has to exist. That's not encouraging us to sin. Of course not. But it's a hypothetical saying, look, don't worry. If you've committed any sin, don't worry. The cross worked and it'll be applied to your life. When the sin actually exists, you can count on the blood of Jesus Christ. And it's a once for all cleansing. So I don't think we need to take this passage, which James meant to uh, comfort and assure Christians, and then somehow uh, spin it into an if where the cross didn't work yet or the forgiveness is in doubt. The forgiveness is not in doubt, quite the opposite. The whole purpose of this passage, maybe James didn't phrase it our favorite way. Maybe James didn't say it exactly like Hebrews. Maybe James didn't say it exactly like Paul. But his whole point is, hypothetically, if a sin exists, it'll be forgiven. Hypothetically, if you sin next week or next year, it'll be forgiven. When? Well, as soon as it happens. But it has to happen. So it's an assurance verse. And that's what it's really doing here. It's meant to comfort believers, not scare them.